there were people who were not having access to electricity. So this is a project which is funded by EPSRC Defit UK and I had this opportunity and I was surprised to find that there is a lot of opportunity for businesses to provide electricity. There is an opportunity for government to join hands with businesses. But so what we are trying to do is to create business models so that we could provide some concrete electricity in those areas. And let me just also share some thoughts with you that when we were around that village, I stayed there for around 15 days. There were, um, I asked people, like, why do they need electricity? Can you imagine what their answers were? To watch TV. Hmm? To watch TV. Mobile charge. To watch TV. Mobile charger, they had in another story. I'll, I'll tell you that as well. <laughs> First of all, you know, when uh, these people were asked why do they need electricity, the first answer was they need it for their children education. So that means see the aspirations in those villages. And they said if, even if you could give us only for, uh, and in India, even in Delhi, we have access to electricity, we can't study without, if the condition is not working. You know, I faced this issue in my university as well as in my family. So this is this is what we, we have access to all these facilities, but they wanted it for the children education. And then you know, while we were, it was a stretch of 15 kilometers. We had to walk through it. It was an elephant corridor. Uh, so we we were walking uh, back to the town, and uh, we saw I saw a boy who had a bag on his bicycle. I asked him where is it inside. He never wanted to show it to me. It was actually a mobile charger. Imagine, 15 kilometers he traveling every day to get five chargers charged. There were only five mobile phones. And when we asked the villagers, they said we don't have any mobile phone. They had five mobile phones. Every day he traveled 15 kilometers to get those mobile phones charged in the town, right? And then he comes back. So this is how, you know, they are also aspirations aspirational and we need business models where we can give them, uh, we, we can provide uh, facilities for them and uh, they also have some skills uh, related to, you know, they collect some forest NTFPs which we call non-timber forest produce and they know how to make very good maps but in the evening they do not have light so they can't work, right? So if we give them something and then we or try to be a, be a line up with various state agencies to market those maps to give off grid electrification. So every product and service has to get revolved around a model. So this is uh, something which businesses can do. Food security issues, I'm not going into these details. Now this is uh, something about the business and ecosystem. Somebody mentioned that we depend on the ecosystem. So what is the interrelationship? between business and ecosystem, uh, Department of Environment, uh, you know, uh, on, on their tables, right? And these were rejected. So mining is something which is creating a lot of revenue for India, but we could not uh, export this product because mining activity has already stopped. So changing supply chains, that means goods which are being manufactured in India, as well as South Asia, Bangladesh, for cotton and all, people are, people in developed countries, you know, we are talking about globalization, talk about Procter & Gamble, you know, it is manufacturing product A in Thailand, product B in India, because, you know, it's again a global village, right, and supplying the same products to the customers all across the world. Okay, a lot of products are being exported from India and other South Asian countries to developed countries. And if not Indian customers, customers in the developed countries are rejecting these products. I'll give you an example of grapes. Baha grapes, which come from Maharashtra. Anybody from Maharashtra here? Yeah, you are from which place? Bombay. Bombay, yes. So, uh, Baha grapes uh, were being exported from uh, um, India, but during last five years, we've seen a drastic reduction in our exports to developed countries. What do you think is the reason? Yeah, 
Yes, there are. Yes, there are environmental issues. Yes. <coughs> Actually, the pesticides which we use on our farms are banned in developing countries. The residual effects. The residual effects, which we call pesticide residue, and maximum residue limit, limit, which is the technical word MRL limits. Maximum residue limits of our, uh, uh, you know, they check. For all the commodities which are being exported, they check MRLs, right? And, maximum, and our products cross those MRLs. Even some of the pesticides which are banned in developed countries, we were using it. Right. So that is how, huh, yes, you mentioned the right name. Yes. So this is how, you know, we are suffering. Grape farmers, they are facing this. You might have seen two years back, we had a lot of grapes in Delhi, which were rejected. Okay? Uh, foreign markets did not accept this and these came actually late, Feb, March, you know, they came into the market and grapes were selling around 20 rupees a kg or so. This was the reason that, you know, uh, people were not, the grape farmers were not able to export their products. So, and then also there are issues related to uh, eco and social labeling. Those who travel to Europe, they must be knowing that uh, fair trade products, they buy tea, you no know, fair trade. These are the eco labels. Those who are already, you know, I don't know from which countries you belong to. Hmm? Okay, so you must be knowing about the fair trade products which are very popular in uh, uh, Europe, especially in UK. Okay, and then changing policies and regulations from the government. They may uh, more water back to the ecosystem than it. Uh, takes, consumes for its as a raw material, right? And you know the the uh, the bad part here is that much of the raw materials which we extract from ecosystems are free. Companies are not paying for that. Water, free, you are utilizing air, everything you know. You just explore as if you know you are bound to take it. And nobody has valuated, uh, you know, these raw materials. The valuation of the raw materials has not been done. But now companies are doing that. Can you give an example of a company which is very close? You all use their products. They, this is the first company which has tried to evaluate these, uh, you know, raw material costs, these ecosystem costings into their financial statements. Have you heard of it? CPL, have you heard of it? <laughs> no? It's Puma. Puma, you know. They have, uh, you know, if you go to their website and download a few reports, you'll actually like this. They have actually, you know, financially evaluated ecosystem services. Right? And they have given place to these uh, costs these externalities into their financial statements, okay? Like when they are preparing their financial statements, they are also evaluating these resources. So Puma is the first company which has actually done this. ONGC, ONGC in India, ONGC has been the pioneer in water, waste and energy management, right? And near into uh, you can see, and so the point I am trying to make is that over the last 10 years, there has been a lot of emphasis on how companies do business and how companies integrate sustainability into the business. Product in such a way that it consumes less energy, it consumes less space. Less space means more efficient in terms of logistics, okay? And you can design it, in, design it in such a way that it, it has less, it uses less packaging. Okay? So this is how you know that at, even at the product development stage, you can use, uh, you can design your products in such a way that it is a sustainable product. It consumes CFL. When you replace your traditional bulbs with CFLs, you know, this is a new product. So, the, at the design stage itself, you can do something. Then, raw material extraction. There are n number of ways through which you can extract raw materials in an environment friendly way. You can replace
replace the raw materials. You can replace one chemical with, with another chemical which is friendly. You, you can have artificial chemicals in place of natural ingredients. Okay? So,